The Canon R5. This has been a long journey for me. I got interested in this camera before it was even a camera. When they released the Canon R, I thought before the specs came out, this was what we were gonna get. I was wrong. It got a 30 megapixel camera and uh, the 4K footage just didn't have the options in the specs that I was hoping for. For me, I do a lot of video and photo at the same time so i'm documenting my photography journey or i'm hiking and so what i was finding is i was having to carry multiple cameras the r5 fixes that i get all the video quality i want and the photo quality i want in one camera I've been shooting with it for about three weeks now, and I absolutely have fallen in love with it. But from the day they released the Canon R5, I mean, literally, like Peter McKinnon is doing the announcement for Canon. It's being live streamed. I'm in my tr in my buddy's truck. We're headed up to the Adirondacks, and I'm I'm trying to purchase it. You know, pre-order it. I didn't know when they were going to release it. Is it going to be the start of the live stream or the end of the live stream? And so Canon's site wasn't responding. Other sites weren't responding. So I went to B&H, whereas I get most of my stuff from B&H, and it let me place a pre-order. I figured I had to have got it, you know, in time to, to be one of the first people. I don't know how many Canon shipped B&H, but I was not one of the first round. The release and my order was placed in, I guess it was the beginning of July. Well, the first round of cameras didn't go out until, you know, like August sometime. Uh, and then I got another email from B&H saying that, you know, I was going to have to wait till the next round. Uh, and Canon had told them that it was going to be sometime in, in September. Well, in September, I got another email saying that, you know, they're, they apologize, but it's been pushed back for another couple of weeks. And then it finally came. And uh, I've taken it to the Adirondacks. I've have it, I have it here at Shenandoah. I'm using it for photo, for video, and it's absolutely incredible. I'm just going to tell you, as a landscape photographer, who does YouTube about his photography and all kinds of other stuff. And I have several YouTube channels actually where I do a lot of video work. So, you know, I do a lot of photo work, which is landscape, almost all of it. And then a lot of video work and the R5 just nails it all. I mean, it's the perfect camera for me. One of the key features I was looking for in my next camera was overall image quality. The resolution, both photo and video on this R5 is out of this world. A resolution of 8192 by 5464, this takes resolution to a whole nother level compared to the cameras that I was using before, the Canon R, the, the 80D, and, and, and the GH5, and some other cameras. The camera has a 45 megapixel sensor and is capable of 8K. I'm not gonna be using 8K. Uh, 8K is pretty pointless for me. Most computers and software can't handle 8K without a whole lot of uh, tweaking and crashing and everything. I, I, I just want the 4K with the frame rates that this has. But let me tell you about the key feature that was the big difference 
and waiting for this camera. And that's because Canon hadn't done this before on, on their DSLRs or mirrorless cameras and that's in body stabilization. So I can get handheld footage that's buttery smooth. Uh, you could do it some with the GH5, some Sony cameras, you know, cameras that have in-body stabilization combined with a lens that has uh, stabilization. You, you can almost get rid of a tripod when it's daytime to do handheld shots. When I was looking at the check boxes my next camera had to have, that was right there. It had to have in-body stabilization. And I had gotten to the point where it had to be a Canon because I wanted that menu system. I wanted those features. The dual pixel autofocus. The autofocus covers the entire screen. You can move the focus point around with the joystick. This is some of the handheld video I've gotten with the Canon R5 and some of the photos I've taken with the R5 since I purchased or since I received it. And I, I think you'll agree they're just absolutely stunning. Beyond the fantastic image quality the R5 has, some of the other features that I really enjoy are the 4K 120 frames per second. I think it's very odd that the camera doesn't have 1080 120 frames per second, but it does have 4K 120 frames per second. You know, it seems like with most cameras that have a high frame rate like 120, you have to click a special setting to get it to go into the 120 instead of just having that 120 listed right beside the 60 and all the other frames per second. And I'm sure there's a great reason for it. It just doesn't seem, you know, very efficient to me. Let's let's try to get that 120 right there where the rest of the frame rates are. I mentioned that in-body stabilization was one of the huge factors. Eight stop in-body stabilization. It's absolutely fantastic. It's got a high resolution viewfinder. And so when you're looking in there, you're getting a very real idea of what your picture is going to look like. It's it's one of the best that I've ever seen. It's got very fast continuous shooting at 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter, which you can either go quiet or leave it on in sound. 45 megapixel sensor, absolutely fantastic performance out of it. You can shoot in C-Log. It has Canon's typical flip out screen that rotates so that you can vlog with it very easily. The Bluetooth Wi-Fi connection is so much faster than, than in the past. You can go into the app and be connected to your phone. And I'm gonna say maybe 25 seconds at most after you've done it the first time. A lot of people were very concerned about the, the camera having dual card slots. It doesn't mean that much to me, but it does have a CF Express card and a standard SD slot. With an external recorder like the, the Ninja 5, you can shoot in 10 bit 422 with frame rates up to 120 frames per second, as well as have options for C log and HDR gamma profiles. You can jack your ISO way up, way beyond anything I would ever use, but the camera does really well in low light. I'm very happy with its performance in low light. There was concerns about the camera overheating. For me, that specifically was not a problem. I'm not really gonna use any part of it that's gonna cause it to overheat repeatedly. It's definitely a little bit concerning to me, you know, the way that they handled this situation. However, spec for spec, this camera was a must buy for me. The camera with the battery is just over a pound and a half at 1.63 pounds. Thank you for watching the video. It means a lot to me. And if you could share the video on your Facebook walls, on your social media walls, it'll help me grow the channel and reach more viewers. I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. You have an awesome week.